So today we're going to talk about playing ripped Blu-rays back on OS X. I'm using Snow Leopard. The process should be similar on Leopard as well. Uh, so long as you can install an application that plays back M2TS files. That's the, the uh, file type for most Blu-rays. Um, in my case, I've tried a few different applications and I've had a, a different experience with each. Uh, I've used VLC, M-Player, um, XBMC, and Plex. Uh, so far, I've had the best experience using XBMC. It seems to have um, the smoothest playback as well as the best compatibility with many different types of Blu-rays, dependent upon you know bit rate and intensity um, and whatnot. Um, so I've gone ahead and pre-ripped uh, a Blu-ray in order to show you exactly what kind of a file structure you're going to end up with if you do the same. Um, I'm currently ripping my Blu-rays on the, the Windows side. Um, there's there's some more options and it's a simpler process in my opinion. Uh, the, the, the most widely used and ubiquitous application um, is any DVD HD. Most people are familiar with it. Um, it'll give you the option to uh, compress or, or leave your files in their original format. In my case I like to uh, make a, an exact image or replica of the original Blu-ray without compression. Obviously the downside of that is I end up with uh, relatively large files but that's okay because I generally don't st store them locally anyways. Um, after you're done ripping the file, it's, it's a fairly simple process of doing that. You end up with, like I said before, an ISO, an image file, and I've got one mounted right now so I can go through how the structure works with you. Um, this is the Rock and Rolla ISO. It's uh, mounted currently. If I, if I launch the mount, I'll see um, three folders here within the original structure. Um, the majority of the Blu-ray information is stored within this BDMV folder. Go ahead and click on it. Um, within here, you'll see um, another group of folders and a couple other files. And the important folder in order to find our feature film is the stream folder, which you'll see in my case is down here at the bottom. Um, after clicking on the stream folder here, uh, in most cases, you'll see um, a fairly large group of M2TS files. M2TS is the extension normally used for uh, Blu-ray movies, and these M2TS files represent not only the feature film but also the special features, alternate endings, etc. Basically any video footage that's stored on that Blu-ray disc. Um, the part here that um, is important is being able to decipher which M2TS file is the largest. And the reason for that is because the feature film is pretty much always the largest M2TS file um, in any stream folder of any Blu-ray. Um, the best way to do that is generally to go to um, in, on the Mac side to the view button within the finder and select arrange by and then size. Now in my case they are already arranged by size by default so the largest file is going to be at the bottom here. This this file here 0002M2TS is going to be my feature film. It's a 20 gigabytes in size and Blu-rays can range anywhere from about 15 gigabytes all the way up to about 30. I've seen some as big as 35. It's fairly rare. But the feature film tends to take up a fair amount of space. So um, for most people, they may not be something that's important to have ripped at the moment. But if you do have a lot of storage and you've got a large Blu-ray collection, it might be worth backing some of them up um, if you've got the space for them. So anyway, in my case, this is obviously the feature, and I'm going to go ahead and open it. Now, like I said before, I've got a number of applications that are capable of opening it, but in our case, I'm going to go ahead and use my favorite, which has been XBMC. Um, it's located here. Now, as you'll see, XBMC basically handles the file as it would handle any video file. Like you can go ahead and launch it either from within XBMC or from outside like I just did. What you're seeing right now is the opening sequence of Rock and Rolla and it may or may not come through on YouTube but it's extremely smooth and extremely clear and the audio sounds great. Um, within XBMC you've got a couple of features and functions that you can use. Um, normally I have to launch the audio button because it seems that by default uh, the subtitles button is always enabled. So I go ahead and go into subtitles and disable it. Um, here's where you can also select your audio streams if you want to change to a different language. But very simple to do um, and a lot smoother than some of the other applications. 
Um, you've also got Some money. your video settings Some and whatnot drugs. as well. If you're familiar with XBNC, then you know all of guy. this, and I don't have to the show you. What a fame. But the important part is oh, the uh, video mama. down here, which, as you can Always see on my machine, uh, is playing Why? extremely smoothly. Um, no real now, I've got a 2.8 gigahertz What's MacBook Pro, low? so it shouldn't have a problem as far as decoding this, but if you've got a different machine, and you're wondering if it'll be coded or not, it's good to give it a try using the system that I just explained. And um, if you have success, then go ahead and post it in the comment section because I'd be interested to know the uh, minimum hardware requirements to play back um, a similar Blu-ray. So anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, give it a shot and uh, let me know how it goes for you. All right, see you later.